Changing the Barrier Gender Rules On May 30th, 1926, in New York City, George Jorgensen Sr. and Florence Jorgensen welcomed a baby boy called George Jorgensen Jr. He lived in a family of four with her mother, father, and sister. He lived in a nice neighborhood and was brought up in a typical white, middle-class life. He lived in a pretty happy family. At a young age, Jorgensen noticed that he felt different from the other boys his age. George hated a lot of things that were associated with boys, things such as short hair, boy clothing, fighting, and sports. He resented his sister and wanted to play with girl toys, like dolls and stuffed animals. He felt hopeless and unhappy, as she later revealed about not knowing how she truly felt at the time. He also felt as she, he also felt as a, as he quoted in the future, frail, blonde, introverted little boy who ran from fist fights and rough and tumble games. As a teenager, it became more obvious to him that he was very different from other boys. Jorgensen began to feel attracted to boys, but refused to admit that he might have been gay. It was during his teen years that he felt he was a woman stuck in a man's body. After Jorgensen graduated from high school, he enlisted in the army twice, but was rejected both times for his small appearance. After being denied, he was drafted into the military and got a desk job. He didn't feel like he fit in with the other men there. He served in the military for over a year and got discharged after enlisting because of an illness. After Jorgensen was discharged from the military, he moved to Hollywood in hopes of finding a job in photography. While in California, Jorgensen confined to his closest friends that he felt he had the emotions of a girl. In 1948, he moved to the East Coast and enrolled in in a photography class at Progressive School of Photography in New Haven, Connecticut. While there, he heard about an endocrinologist who was performing experiments with hormones on animals. He tried to contact the doctor about the experiments, but he was rejected and was referred to a psychiatrist to get rid of his feeling. He didn't listen and instead found a new hope for how he felt. George Jorgensen moved to Denmark in the early 1950s in May. There he met Dr. Christian Hamburger, an expert in transsexuality. They met up to talk about helping him find his true identity. He began by taking estrogen in the form of ethanolodistriol. Then the doctor instructed George to take hormone replacement therapy. As he took them, Dr. Hamburger noted the change in the increase in memory glands. Then Harry and a girl where George had a bald patch on, and he started to take the female shape. After more than a year of therapy, he had his first surgery on September 24, 1951, to change her genital organ. The surgery had commenced, and it was surgery since it was all an experiment. Then in 1951, he also had an orchiectomy, and in 1952, he had a pineoctomy. He finally completed a series of procedures in 1952, the last being the piece making it a full transformation in the U.S. After a whole transformation, Miss Christine Jorgensen was born and took a spotlight as being a trans star. She was the most popular case in America's first trans sweetheart. She became very known and was offered many roles in film and on the stage. Christine also had the chance to become the world's first reality celebrity. She shied away and chose to live a vicious yet a very normal life. Performing at cabarets and nightclubs, she became a distinguished speaker at schools and institutions all across the country. Jorgensen used her power to do good, creating a platform for people to talk seriously about transgender issues. Christine handled her fame with grace. Until the end of her life, she refused to be disrespected or treated poorly because of her difference. She would rather show people how you could be glamorous, rich, and beautiful. Your life could be no matter your assigned gender. At the end of her life, she had a private home in Hollywood and home in Laguna Beach where she spent her life before succumbing to lung cancer in 1989. Christine's ashes were scattered up Dana Point in California. Christine Jorgensen highly influenced many people to speak publicly about trans issues and to not hide it. That is still a normal thing and you can be whatever you want and still be living a great life. There is many more popular cases coming out and still to this day and many people don't judge it as much and are very interested in it too. And since there's more public cases, it's now very hard to find.